They're now hiring a record number of people to go into Q4 for logistics. So they're definitely anticipating a huge Q4. There's a lot of parts of the business that are really growing quickly and they're all tied in really nicely with that advertising side that they're really putting a lot of effort into growing. And it's such a big profit center for them that's growing that I think they're going to continue to roll out more ad products and a lot more for advertisers. And we're seeing it in such a way that we haven't in the past couple of years. Like two years ago, we would say, no, Amazon doesn't care about their ad partners. We're just here, we're trying, we're doing our best, but we're making suggestions and things are getting implemented now. Like the platform is actually improving. <laughs> If you're a D2C brand on Shopify and you're not using Black Crow, then you're leaving significant revenue on the table. Black Crow uses your own data to help you identify customers returning to your site who would otherwise remain anonymous. The more customers you can identify, the more email and SMS abandonment messages you can send. You'll see incremental revenue almost immediately without having to change any of your existing flows. The best part? All it takes is a one-click integration. There's zero development work required. Head on over to blackcrow.ai slash DTC to get started with a free 30-day trial. It's all killer, no filler. I'm Eric, and I am here with the Amazon Brain Trust from Pilot House, Rob and Clifford, uh, to talk a little bit about uh, the Q4, uh, the place of Amazon in your Q4 omnichannel planning, as well as um, a little bit about their finance, about Amazon's recent financial results and what that might indicate for the future. Rob, start us off. How should our listeners be thinking about Amazon's role specifically in Q4 in their omni-channel strategy? Yeah, I think Q4 and in general, it's important to look at channels um, in terms of what's their, what's their major value add and their unique differentiator. Amazon has always been their fulfillment. And I think that becomes more important in Q4 as people come up to holiday deadlines, travel, gifting. People want to trust that their packages, packages are going to show up show up on time and buy a certain delivery date. Uh, as you come up to those dates in Q4, it's likely that people are going to start shifting more to buying on Amazon as they're coming up to like a deadline. Uh, and you might start to see more conversions happen on Amazon. Makes sense. Makes sense. Just as the pressure of the, of the season kind of mounts, you'll go with the, the sure hands of Amazon, you know, more times than not, I guess. Right. Cause you know exactly how long it's going to take to, to get there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, as you're kind of approaching those holidays, you might say be spending very heavily in the meta right now. And like heavily in the meta, that gives you the opportunity to kind of create awareness, reach customers for the first time, and do really unique things on your Shopify site like bundles that boost AOV. Um, there's a lot more potential for that sort of sales or building custom things on your Shopify site where Amazon's fairly limited from a discount perspective. But as you get closer to those dates, you're gonna might see more of that bottom of the funnel convert on Amazon. So as you look at your ROAS on each platform, if you're seeing your meta ROAS kind of maybe slow down and check on Amazon and see if you're seeing a pickup, especially in branded search and branded traffic, branded ads, because those are the customers that are, saw an ad and they search for the brand on Amazon. If you're seeing a pickup there, you might be willing to look at that as an ecosystem and say, hey, you know what? If we spend heavier in the meta, we're making it up on Amazon. So let's not actually cut spend. Let's keep it going. Make sure Amazon's running efficiently and come out ahead in the long term uh, on the quarter versus siloing each channel. Very cool. I'm sure it uh, varies across brands, but I'm just, I'm curious in the brands we work with, like what is, what does the split for like Amazon ads versus something like meta ads look like? It, it, Cause I, I, I know meta ads is considered kind of the bread and butter for a lot of the clients, specifically at pilot house. I know we have a lot of Amazon specific brands as well, but like what does, if you're, if you're spending heavily on uh, meta, what, what does the ratio look like for what you might be spending on Amazon? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, Clifford, do you have any other off the top of your head? I'm trying to think of a couple. I know some of our brands that, um, like we have some Amazon first brands that Amazon's their main driver. So we actually way eclipse the meta spend on Amazon. Um, but as you just said, like our bread and butter at Pilot House has been meta for, for a long time. So with those instances, like it does vary a lot on the brand because it depends on like, is Amazon at like an infancy? And are we leading mm -hmm. into scaling and growth or is it like established and actually holding rank? Um, totally depends. To pull a rough number out of my hat, I'm going to say like 10, 20%. Yeah. Um, on like the, the like, hey, we're, that's a DTC brand first. 
scaled meta. That's their main focus. They launched Amazon. Amazon's not brand new, but it's not super mature. It's kind of in like first year, maybe second, first year. Um, you're probably going to be in this 20% mark. But if you're starting to see those performance gains this time of year, uh, and you might be seeing them dip on meta, don't be afraid to shift budget. I know Clifford's never shy about having people shift bud- budget to Amazon ads. Yeah, there's especially like, it, it, I feel like it's very dependent on how easily searchable to a generic audience the product is. Like we've we've had some that we scaled the daylights out of their Amazon because they, they might have been doing more on their DTC site or with meta ads initially, but once we got them and, and got a lot of their Amazon ads dialed in, we're actually way out spending on Amazon than they were on DTC now. Um, whereas there's others where we've had them for a couple years and they're still way out spending on meta compared to Amazon just because like their Amazon presence is a lot more um, like they're generating the intent for it more because they're reliant on branded search and they don't really fit a really good generic niche. Like people aren't searching for their product directly. Like it's kind of like if you were, uh, we always use the running shoe example, but kind of like if you're a really good fit to running shoes, but you're trying to sell like a $200 Nike Air Force One, like Nike is generating the demand for the Air Force One. They're not going to sell a lot of those to generic running shoe audience who's just looking for running shoes. But if you're that running shoe, there's huge demand for that on Amazon. So like in almost every niche and market, this exists where if it's a product that's a really good fit for Amazon, we've been able to really scale up that presence. And in many cases, it's more profitable and it comes in a lot better than their meta side does because you get those organic longer term sales that continue to flow in where on the the DTC side they're continuing to have to generate that demand constantly to start, keep customers there. Start fresh yeah. every day whereas yeah you're building rolling momentum on Amazon. Amazon too I guess by is is the darling in the ad community right now because it's got so much room to grow. They have so much potential inventory. They have all these different ways that they can they can grow it. So you're probably, it probably makes sense that you'll see some performance gains there. Although I did just talk to someone off the record who told me they bought on Thursday night football with Amazon. And it was really not this, this early iteration of, of, the, of that buy was not very good. So that's, that's one anecdotal uh, thought I've heard. Yeah. They're running Thursday night football, more like traditional advertising still. Um, it's outside of their suite of streaming TV and other platforms that you can programmatically buy on Thursday night football they have as more like you have to buy a specific package they manage it it's it's much more like buying old school traditional media right now than it is integrated with the rest of their ad products nice I was just in a pre-interview with this really exciting sort of like unicorn ish brand who's selling uh supplements creatine which is this uh product that's sort of like really having a glow up right now I'm taking it personally it was one of the reasons I had them on um and they mentioned that their brand uh is really heavy on d2c um but they're only about 10 percent of their revenue coming in from Amazon at this point they're just dabbling with Amazon ads this person mentioned that actually when you buy creatine, it's like 80% of people buying these kind of supplement type products are buying them on Amazon already. So I just saw this as like a huge, huge opportunity. I kind of outright pitched. I'm like, you got to work with Clifford Rob. You got to like, I think these guys could really blow it up. I'm just curious if you had a brand come in with this kind of market opportunity, like what would the process be like that, that you would, that you would take this campaign in over like the, its first three to six months? Yeah, that's really good. I know Clifford will have some stuff to say on this. Um, where I go right off the bat is like, you mentioned it right there. If 80% of the traffic for creatine is going to Amazon, like you're going to be very competitive and your bids are going to be quite high. So you're going to say, well, first, how do we make sure we're maximizing the value of every incremental dollar we're going to spend on Amazon? And that comes down to really nailing the listing and spending some, investing some time there and making sure that's perfect and dialed in and really hits on the unique USPs for this product. Like how is it different than other, every other creatine supplement on the market? Why is it better? Why does why does the customer need it over everything else? And how do you make that clear within a hero image and the first bit of the title? Uh, because that's going to get you the click, and then you can actually do the selling on the listing. I love it. From a advertising perspective, um, again, it's going to be competitive. So if this brand is doing volume on DTC, 
your easiest foot in the door to get the flywheel churning and start building some rank is going to be capitalizing on the branded traffic that's already there. But that's not super high value and the brand's probably listening to that being like, well, why would I spend on branded? The customer's already aware. But if you can really hammer that volume hard from a velocity standpoint, well, being smart and very deliberate about what keywords you're going after from a generic perspective, the branded sales and branded velocity will help you build rank faster on the generic side of things and actually let you hold those ranks. If you're not bidding on the branded and you're not maximizing that volume, you're going to have a way harder climb on the generic side of things. So it's important to do both with the goal of ranking for generic. And I got to be very clear about that because that's where the value is, is like, how do you convert customers that are going to Amazon searching creatine? Because it's that's that's the bulk of the market. That's what you want to capitalize. That's your net new customers. Being creatine, you're taking it consistently, so you're likely going to lean into lifetime value and subscribe and save. Go heavy on if you can on your subscribe and save coupons right off the bat. If you can get a customer into LTV and repeat purchases, then that's just going to free up your cash to spend on advertising as well. Exactly. Did I miss anything, Clifford? I don't think so. Uh... Like, yeah, we've, we've definitely had a few that have come in with branded, like what, what you'll find when you have that much of a, that much of a spend and that much brand already established is there's already a lot of people searching for your stuff on Amazon in a big way. So like, like Rob said there, just leveraging that to scale up your generic presence there works really well. And this is, um, it's quite common across the a lot of the websites becoming a lot more common is that like, for example, if you look at plant protein powders, I think Truvani is still one of the number one ones there. Truvani is not the cheapest. They are in no way, I don't think they have an incredible value proposition compared to something like Orgain or Vega does in that space. But Truvani has massive brand presence from all of their social ads and everywhere else that they're pushing that product. So on Amazon, they're just basically leveraging that outside presence to sell a lot on the platform. Um, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure they've probably tried many times. It's not an easy task to try to track back what their Amazon sales look like compared to what their branded is getting from Meta and whatnot. It's unfortunately data that Amazon kind of obscures, but whatever they're doing is likely having a large effect on their Amazon presence, which they can then leverage to sell more to words like plant-based protein, which then opens this whole new market to them outside of people who are already aware of it from the brand. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at all the different creatine gummies. There's not, first of all, not a lot of gummies on there. There's some chews and there's a lot of the powder, but what I love about their brand is it's not this, it's really kind of it's not about the, it's not your 2000s idea of what creatine is, which is, you know, like, it's going to give you back knee and it's going to, you know, it's, you're going to get real pumped or whatever. Like it's, it's getting this vibe as more of just like one of the most powerful supplements you can take. And I feel like the whole branding on this product, it actually stands in contrast to a lot of what's out there on Amazon right now, which I feel they could use to their advantage as well. Yeah, definitely. Anything that helps you stand out in that market is going to like draw the eye and get the click. Um, what you're going to want to be mindful of there is like, what keywords are you bidding on? And cause I imagine there's like a bunch of like long tail stuff to creatine. So if they're trying to be different than the most of the market and they're not actually appealing to the like gym rat that wants the like super like intense looking bottle of creatine, that's going to be like, yeah, it's going to jack me up. Um, then don't bid on those keywords. And try and segment that out so you're bidding on the right words for your product to break into that market. Because a big market like creatine, it's like, how do you find your way in? And like that's gonna take some testing, some figuring out, but you wanna be very deliberate about what keywords you're going after, what's your goal for that keyword, what's what's it actual, what is it trying to do, and are you super relevant for it? Especially if bids are super high. On top of investing in bidding on your brand to supercharge that account, give it the best chance of of getting momentum. Yeah. Yeah. So, but marrying that with your generic strategy at the same time. So you're like capitalizing on the velocity you're creating. You don't want to just bid on branded and nothing else. Like you want to balance that out to make sure you're moving in the right direction. Nice. I'm going to send him this clip just to see, just to get his feedback on it. I'm just trying to get more creatine gummies. Yeah, I'm tired of taking it in my bio steel every day. So, um, yeah, I've been super curious to try, try some too. I've never actually tried it. So yeah. I'm like, do you have to work out? If he likes the answer, I'm like, hey. do you have to work out, or is it just there are benefits? There's multiple. I'm gonna, I, I'm taking it before ball hockey yeah. tonight, so we'll see if I, uh, if I have any increased nice. performance. If he likes my, if, yeah. 
if he likes my answer and can hook me up, I'd appreciate it. I'd be, I'd be down to try. All about free stuff on the D2C podcast. Oh, yeah. Um, let's end it, Pilotos. Let's talk about uh, Amazon's quarterly earnings. I, Robert, or, uh, Clifford, you, you wrote up a, a little summary for us uh, in the newsletter. But what, were the, what was the, the, you know, what's the thesis? What's the, what's the high-end takeaway you got from those, those earnings report? I mean, obviously, if you're not an Amazon shareholder already, you should be. Because why would you not invest in the fastest growing advertising platform? Um, but every quarter for the last like six or seven, eight quarters, I've been really watching it. Amazon has grown their advertising division by 20 to 25% year over year each time. It's been insane growth of their advertising services revenue um, to now it's, it's brought in $12 billion in a quarter um, for like relativity, um, their online store is only brought in like 57 billion overall. That's wild. Um, and it's a force multiplier so because it sells more, you know what I mean? Like it's free inventory. It costs nothing for them to sell it. And it just drives the other revenue of their business. It drives their percentage of sales. It's, it's diabolical. Yeah. So they're like, not only are they getting huge growth in their advertising division, of course, like they're getting growth out of their own brands, their own online stores basically just culminates everything that they're selling directly, which they saw 6% growth in uh, their third party seller services. So this is all the sellers on Amazon. They pay for fulfillment. They pay the referral fees, all of that. They pay to sell on the platform, 18% growth year over year there. Like Amazon seeing some with, with the scale that they're at, the growth numbers that they're seeing year over year are insane. And they're also now generating okay profit, which is not something I'm used to saying when it comes to Amazon outside of just AWS. AWS grew, but and that profit grew, but they're actually generating profit from their main, you know, from the website now, from Amazon.com, that they weren't in the past. Because now with such a heavier reliance on third-party sellers and on their advertising revenue, Amazon has now found a way to make a lot more profit than they did in the past. Because turns out just directly selling stuff themselves wasn't a great profit driver when they're constantly uh, pushing to the bottom on retail price. Why not make more money getting sellers to pay you to sell their stuff and getting sellers to pay for advertising. Piss them off less too, right? There was, there was a lot of clash of people, people having feeling their products. It was, it was a bad look for Amazon with this idea that they could just be stealing people's products and launching them themselves. A hundred percent. And like outside of all the growth that they've experienced, they're now hiring. I think, like, I think it's a record number of people to go into Q4 for logistics. So they're definitely anticipating a huge Q4 because they know they're going to need that increase in warehouse staff. They're sitting on a giant pile of cash, which we don't know what they're going to do with. Um, and there's also just like an incredible amount of logistical changes that they've been making. Like Amazon over the past year or so has moved from a nationwide fulfillment network to a lot of little regional hubs and whatnot to make shipping even faster. A lot more areas now have Prime overnight shipping, Amazon Fresh is expanding. There's a lot of parts of the business that are really growing quickly and they're all tied in really nicely with that advertising side that they're really putting a lot of effort into growing. And it's such a big profit center for them that's growing that I don't think that investment is going to slow down in any way. I think they're going to continue to roll out more ad products and a lot more for advertisers. And we're seeing it in such a way that we haven't in the past couple of years. Like two years ago, we would say, no, Amazon doesn't care about their ad partners. We're just here. We're just, we're trying, we're doing our best, but we're making suggestions and things are getting implemented now. Like the platform is actually improving. <laughs> which is not something I would have said a couple of years ago. So they're, they're actually listening. They're actually making a lot of improvements and um, the whole ad side of things is getting a lot better. Kudos, Amazon. We know you're listening. Uh, we love it. Uh, also, just their international growth. You, you were like, just first of all, to be able to turn, to, to change profit year over year uh, in Q3 from a, you know, half a billion dollar loss to a $4.3 billion profit is insane. And then they're seeing this, they're, they're basically also, uh, losing a lot less on their international segment, which would be another reason for uh, investment not to slow down because they're they're still so heavily concentrated in North America, I guess, right? 
Yeah, a hundred percent. And it's it's exciting to see that they're actually starting to get international to almost like break even now, roughly, um, because it's it's obviously a huge growth driver for them. Is they have we see a lot of Amazon open up new marketplaces, and when you're selling on Amazon and you're constantly managing accounts, you get emails all the time from reps from Saudi Arabia or Australia or Japan saying, open up your business in this marketplace. But a lot of them are honestly just so small that it's really not worth the effort of figuring out all the logistics and compliance and all of that that comes with having to get your inventory over to their fulfillment centers in that country. But as they've been working on logistics to make it simpler and as those marketplaces continue to expand, it's going to be one of the easiest ways to sell internationally. It already is, but it's going to actually start to be a bigger deal. They've already have it in the UK a lot larger. In Europe, they're growing quite a bit. And a lot of these untapped, untapped for Amazon, uh, Asian markets are growing quite quickly. They're just opening up South Africa now. Like they continue to open up new marketplaces, but their steps to get it from very little up to kind of like a useful, profitable scale enough that it matters to the core business is a long drive and it's a large investment that has to come up front to get the logistics worked out. Um, We saw this in Canada in a big way where I'm sure you've noticed that in the past few months, past couple years, things have shifted in Canada from being UPS delivered to Amazon vans delivering everything. That shift happened in America a couple of years before it happened in Canada and it's happening internationally now at a quicker rate. So as Amazon takes over more and more in the business and they continue to expand it, it drives up the scale of that international segment and starts to get into profitability. And there's a lot of growth to be had in a lot of those marketplaces. Huge, not investment advice, but realistically, it's funny. I think about that. I, I, I actually, I'm not personally invested in Amazon. I think back to like being buying on meta in its very first, in its very first weeks and then and also being on meta as a, as a user and just like kind of knowing deep down that this is going to be the way of the future for a long time and and i th- i think back of like should have put my money where my mouth was a bit more i was i was spending you know my life learning this platform and seeing how life changing it could be for people but i didn't actually put down uh any cash at the time and i think it's one of my regrets so maybe i shouldn't do the same with amazon but again i should have well... done that back then too yeah, their earnings just happened and it was really good. So it might not be the That's best true. time. If you would have done it like two weeks ago before the earnings call, it might have been a great idea. Not so great now, maybe. <laughs> it's a blue chip. Who knows? Anyways, we don't talk stuff. We don't talk uh, stock too much on here. But I think again, it's the same for the same reason. If you're a brand that and you're you're. Um, if Amazon's underperforming or if it's only 10% of a business where it could be 80, this is your call to to get aggressive with uh, with and strategic with how you grow there. Nice. Anything else? There was the, the, uh, the last thing was just the, was just that lawsuit about uh, junk keywords or something that was going on there. Any, any, uh, any comments on, on the, uh, the, the SEM issues or lawsuit that, that Amazon's facing? Yeah. So it's, it's all stemming from that greater FTC lawsuit that we kind of mentioned a while back. It's just each little piece keeps coming out individually. I think it's like getting less confidentialized uh, as each piece comes out. Um, A lot of the times these just turn into headlines that are misconstrued. At least that's what I hope on this one. Uh, We don't know the full extent of it, but it sounds like internally Amazon just called things, I think they called them like defect keywords or something like that. I think what it really meant is they were just allowing a little bit less relevant search results to come up as ads, but they obviously have a scale of relevance for them. So something could be super relevant. And in this case, they're just allowing someone to, to show up for, you know, a word that they're a little bit less relevant for because they decided to pay more for it. So I think that's all they were calling defect keywords. They're just allowing a little bit less relevance to come into play if advertisers were willing to pay for it. Which, yeah, makes sense. Um, Cool. Uh, And then I was, I'm just, I I dressed up as uh, Dr. Evil for Halloween this year, but I got to cycle through ball guide costume ideas. So I'm I'm thinking I'm going to be working on my Jeff Bezos for for next Halloween. I think I can pull it off. The creatines would help with that for sure. Yeah. (laughs) 
guys you should help. I got to get a little bit more jacked first, but uh, thanks for pointing that out, Rob. No worries. Uh, <laughs> thanks for coming on today, guys. This was fun. Yeah, no, thank you, Eric. It's a good time. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you're not getting the D2C newsletter, you can subscribe for free at directtoconsumer.co. And if you want to learn more about Pilot House's all killer, no filler services, take off to pilothouse.co. I'm Eric Dick, and this has been the D2C podcast. We'll see you next time.